Hey, you guys, welcome back to Married to Film. Listen, here's part three. Don't worry about it. Excuse me. Oh, my son will understand. I suppose if one employs so-called rock stars, certain unpredictability comes with the territory. You're not angry? Oh, not at all, dear. What happened, happened. Thank you so much, Mr. Hume, for coming and telling me in person. A pleasure meeting you. Uh, Center that flower arrangement, please. Have a good evening. Thank you. Lifer, Stephanie, plus two. Marky, Mary, plus one. Milton, Penny, Solo. Pepper, Nicholas, plus one. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, did you just say Penny? And who are you? Um, I work for Mr. Whitlock. May I see the list? You absolutely may not. That list is confidential. Begging your pardon, Mark. No, I'm entrusted with confidential items. Are you questioning me? No, I just want to look at one name on that list. And if for some reason that's a problem. Come with me. Out, everyone, now. Look, I'm, I'm sorry if I've overstepped my bounds, but Stop I just... Stop talking, Hugh. I've heard what you've had to say. Now you listen to me. I want you to stop. Stop? Stop what? Someone has clearly affected the way you see things. This is a serious problem. It is, in fact, a violation. So whatever you're doing, whatever it is you think you're looking for, you need to stop looking for it. Do you know what I'm looking for, Mrs. Grimaud? I don't know why you're looking for anything. You have the perfect life. On top of it, you've managed to attain the thing you've wanted more than anything. Mm. My husband's approval. <gasps> How do you know what I want? Because I bloody do. I need to see that list. Or you need to tell me why I can't. Can't? Because you're not ready yet, Desmond. Ready? Re ready for what? Come on, Faraday. Mm -hmm. That bad, huh? Is there any alcohol in this car? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hume. Yes? My name is Daniel, Daniel Whitmore. We need to talk. Like, His favorite line <laughs> of all. Look, uh, Mr. Whitmore, I'm Dan. Please call me Dan. Mr. Whitmore's my father. Dan, um, look, if, if this is about Charlie Face not being able to perform with you, I'm, I'm very sorry. Do you believe in love at first sight, Mr. Hume? First time I saw her was walking through this museum a few weeks ago. She, she works there. She was on her lunch break. She's eating a chocolate bar. <gasps> she has these incredible blue, blue eyes, red wow. hair. Wow. And as soon as I saw her, right, right in that moment, it was like... Oh, my God. It was like I already loved her. Wow. Oh, my God. And that's when things got weird. The same <laughs> night after I saw that woman. I woke up and I wrote this. So what is it? I'm a musician. Real time. I have no idea. Imaginary time. So I took it to a friend of mine at Caltech. He's a math whiz. He said, this is quantum mechanics. He said, these equations are so advanced that only someone who'd been studying physics their entire life could have come up with them. So... So what do they mean? Okay, imagine... Imagine something terrible is about to happen. Something catastrophic. And the only way to stop it from happening is by releasing a huge amount of energy. Like setting off a nuclear bomb. You want to set off a nuclear bomb? Just listen. What if it's all this? What if this wasn't supposed to be our life? We had some other life. For some reason, we changed things. I don't want to set off a nuclear bomb, Mr. Young. I think I already did. <laughs> Listen, mate, um, I don't know what any of this has to do with me. So, why did you ask my mother about a woman named Penny? Penny's my sister. That happened to you too, didn't it? You don't know Penny's your sister. 
Oh, well, maybe in this line. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I felt. Yes. Yes, you do. You do. You felt love. That's impossible because I don't know anything about this woman. I don't know. I don't know where she is. I don't even know if she exists. She's. She's an idea. No, it's Jim. She's my half sister. Okay. And I can tell you exactly where and when you can find her. Mm. He said where and when. I'd be damned. Is <gasps> it the stadium? Yes. Unconscious. Or no more than a few seconds. Mm. Will you help me out, please? Oh. I'm really sorry we had to do this to you, Desmond. But as I told you, your talent is vital to our mission. So if you just let me explain, it's all right. I understand. You told me you brought me here to the island to do something very important. Oh my god. When do we start? What happened to you? What do you mean? What I mean is, 20 minutes ago, you were beating the crap out of Widmore with an IV stand, and, and now you're Mr. Cooperative. A lot can happen in 20 minutes. Sure can. I think fried your brain. Oh, God. Did Sorry. Right. Whatever. Doesn't change the. Yeah! explain that these people are extremely dangerous. We need to go now. I, of course. Lead the way. Hello, you okay? What happened? Well, I shook your hand and then you fainted. I must have quite an effect on you. <laughs> I, I, you must have. Uh, I think we remembered it if we had it. Yeah. Well, as long as you're sure you're all right. Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, listen, um, would you like to go for a coffee? What, now? A, a sweaty mess. I just fainted in front of you. Let's <laughs> see where you land. <laughs> There's a coffee shop on the corner of Sweetser and Melrose. I'll meet you there in an hour. Absolutely. Okay. 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 <laughs> so, did you find what you were looking for? Yes, George, I did. <sighs> Corner Melrose and Suiza, please. You got it. And if there's anything else I can do for you, Mr. Hume, you just name it. Actually, there is one thing, George. Can you get me the manifest for my flight from Sydney? Mm. Oceanic 815. Just the names of the passengers. Sure I can. Do you mind if I ask you what you need it for? I just need to show them something. Oh my god. Now, this episode had me all over the place in my mind. I know that, um, I think it started by them testing out the, that radiation machine or whatever on a guy, uh, uh, trying it out, but it, it, something was wrong with it, so they uh, sent the guy out there to check on it, and then some dude just messed with the breaker and fried him. 
but the thing is they got that for a, Whitmore got that made so that because he felt that Desmond would be the only one that would be able to handle all that radiation since he handled it before when the uh, swine blew up um, so they take Desmond down and that Joker tie him down Desmond is Faraday's constant. Yeah, I said that when he um when he first came to the window. I didn't hear it. Oh uh, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, keep keep talking. Uh, and so the radiation did not bother him, but while he was being radiated, he woke up in the plane. Uh, well, he woke up uh, at the uh, at the kiosk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, so, you know, he ran across Hugo and Claire at the baggage claim, and uh, my man is his driver. I can't think of the guy's name. The guy that, Short had, circuit. Yeah, that had the same abilities yeah. uh, from, uh, I think, season four. I think they went through that whole thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so he was his driver. He worked for Whitmore. Whitmore said, you're the most, you're the best thing, you know, since sliced bread. Let him drink the McCutcheon. I told you he was going to let him do uh, but in this version, he had never even heard a penny. He so, never met her. Never met her. Didn't even know that that was Whitmore's daughter. Whitmore and Eloise together. Fair they had a, there. They had a good relationship. Yeah. And evidently, that was one of the things that he wanted, along mm -hmm. with Penny. Mm -hmm. And so he had a job for uh, Desmond to get Charlie to, and his band to play for a charity event for Eloise. And so he goes and to get Charlie um, hold that thought getting Charlie hold that thought getting Charlie uh, Whitmore was the one that called to get Charlie released from jail mm. after he was arrested off the, off mm. the uh, flight and mm. go get Charlie and go uh, Charlie uh, started questioning him about love and all sorts of stuff and, uh, and Charlie grabbed the wheel and they ended up crashing into the water uh, and uh, while he was in the water, Desmond got out, and he went to get Charlie out. And Charlie was, looked like he was dead, but woke up and did this, and put his hand to the window, and then Desmond flashed to not Penny's boat, seeing that on his hand, and uh, freaked him out. Uh, but he ended up eventually getting Charlie out the water, and then next thing you know, they're in the hospital. He's got to get out of He's wondering where Charlie is. They're not telling him. Uh, he came across him and tracked him down and Charlie was like, you felt it, didn't you? You felt it. <laughs> um, yeah, and he just, and, uh, Charlie refused to do the benefit, so he had to go tell Eloise that he wasn't able to get Charlie. Uh, and Faraday tracked him down, because Faraday was there. He's a, a pianist, great pianist, and he broke out the book and he's like, you know, and told him about the imaginary time and real time whatever and he thought that you know this wasn't their real it was weird go ahead interrupt me please no go ahead uh okay i'm done <laughs> um i have a lot to say yeah i know you do go ahead but i was trying to just go ahead and let you go um yeah because when you have a lot to say i don't want to interrupt you because i always mess you up like, you don't remember where you left off, so I say, and go. Mm -hmm. um, backtrack on, or, or backtrack and piggyback on everything that Ralph said. Piggyback. I said piggyback. Piggyback on everything that Ralph said. Charlie explained something to Desmond, which was significant. And I always catch all the nuggets. I'm catching all the nuggets since um, last episode. He said, have you ever been in love? He said, what do you have? You got everything? He said, yeah, I got a good job. You know what I'm saying? I got money. I got this, that, and the other. He said, yeah, but do you have anybody that you ever been in love before? It's like thousands of times. He said, no. That's not what I'm asking. He said, have you ever met, like, the one? And he said, I have. He said, but let me explain something to you. He went through the whole thing of him looking at the, him realizing that Kate was in handcuffs and that the guy was, Next to her was a cop, and that he kept looking at him funny, so he knew he was holding. He went to the bathroom on the plane, tried to swallow it. Turbulence hit, and he choked. 
as he was choking and about to go, he said, as he was going into the abyss, mm -hmm. he seen Claire and he knew that he was with her and that he loved her. I'm probably paraphrasing because I'm pretty sure that's not what he said. So that's what he was saying to Desmond. He said, have you ever had that feeling? He said, and it's the best feeling in the world. Let me show you. That's when he took the wheel and went into the water. He had to show him that there was other things than just this. And then Faraday was able to explain it in a very scientific way that he had the feeling when he looked over and seen Charlotte eating a piece of chocolate that knew there was something about her, that he loved her. Had that vision or whatever, whatever, went to sleep, woke up. And when he woke up, he started writing something. And on the diagram that he was right, um, drawing, in the same notebook that he's always had on the island, real line, real life, or real time, and, imagine, and imag imaginary time. And it was like probably this much of a difference in the circle. Maybe this much. And he was like, what if I tell you and explain to you that this particular timeline can be affected if you have a certain amount of energy to go off like an atomic bomb. Desmond was like, do you want to set off an atomic bomb? He was like, what if I told you I already did? No, he said, no, I already did. Dun, 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 dun. The whole Whitmore thing in this particular timeline, because I'm not too sure, it wasn't cl clear if he knew that Penny was his half-sister or not. It wasn't clear on the last, the other life, that he even knew that Whitmore was his father. Mm -hmm. He knew that he was a sponsor or he um, was his benefit, um, mm -hmm. his benefactor for all of his uh, work. Research, yeah. Research. He never said or never mentioned or nor did his mother say that that was your daddy. We didn't find that out until the flashback of her being pregnant. With Whitmore's child, with 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 Faraday, and Faraday was uh, an adult at that time, so it was pretty. It's pretty awesome how they just putting everything together, and it's just thought we'd never see Desmond again. But I just love Desmond and Penny's love, just like I like uh, Tequila and um, uh, Son. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, and there's that, and I'll be daggone if we're gonna watch another one or not. One thing, uh, it's it's crazy to see all of them still interacting. Still. Still. But where's Michael? In this in this uh, in this different reiteration. Where's Michael and Walt? Those are the only ones we haven't seen. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, they probably focusing on the important six. Yeah, true. True. I hate to say it that way, like he wasn't important because they didn't show him blow up and they didn't find his body either. Yeah, because they said, because Christian said, okay, you can go now or something like that. So we don't know what happened after that. Yeah, but well, who was yeah. Christian? Right. Dun, 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 dun. Right. <laughs> we can keep going. But uh, I mean, I mean, you know what I mean? Not mm -hmm. literal, but you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so let us know what you guys thought of that episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Do all right. We'll see y'all next time. Love y'all. Bye. Love you guys.